Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content, and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game right here, Quests and Cannons, The Risen Islands. Full disclaimer, this is a pay playthrough and review of a game that will be on Kickstarter later on this year. And right here before our eyes, we have a prototype copy of the game and this is what the game looks like set up first of all we have an outer framework for the board which consists of different kingdom and outpost tiles and within that frame you place all of these modular tiles to make up the sea spaces and the islands that you will be traversing throughout the game now while this is a modular board and you can kind of have infinite setup variability the rule book does recommend a certain amount of pre-made configurations that are are balance as far as gameplay is concerned because you can mess with the balance with the game if you just go crazy with the modular setup but we have these different exploration tiles that we place on all the different islands for part of the setup we also have three different decks of cards that we shuffle and place on one of the outpost spaces we have a quest deck we have a loot deck and we have a map clue deck at the beginning of the game, each player will start with one of these ship dashboards, which will keep track of their coins, their action points, any additional resources they might have, their character, their stats, and other abilities. Also at the beginning of the game, each player is going to choose one of these fantastical characters, which will basically serve as a captain for their ship, and will give you additional abilities and starting resources. So first of all, this player here is going to choose Elwing Songfeather, and there is a slot on the dashboard here that you could slide the character tile into. And first of all, with Elwing here, we see that he has five hearts, which means that this ship can sustain five damage before it sinks. And when your ship sinks, it does not mean that you have lost the game or have been eliminated. However, there will be some casualties. For example, some resources will be lost. Perhaps the player whose ship sunk will lose some victory points or grant victory points to the player who made them sink. Also, you will lose progress because your ship will have to return to its starting space. So let's see some of the additional abilities that Elwing grants the player. It says he has Delvish Mobility. Once on your turn, you may discard a loot card from your hand to move up to two spaces. Also, he has Song of Prosperity. Once per turn, when completing a quest, you may spend three coins to gain an additional prosperity. And prosperity is basically the term for victory points in this game. Also here on the right side, we see some of these starting resources that Elwing has available from the beginning. First of all, we start with one sail. And the sail is going to be very helpful for movement because typically on your turn, you could only move one space. But with the assistance of these sails, you'll be able to move a little bit more. Now, it does also come with a maximum. He can never have more than three sails, which is just fine because this the ship itself only comes with three slots available for sales. Also, Elwin here will start with one cannon, which will be helpful for battle. We'll place it right here. And he has a maximum of three. There are four slots available for cannons, but Elwin can never have more than three. Also, he starts with three cargo spaces available. So we will take these little uh, cargo tiles and block off three spaces that are not available. For now, we only have three spaces available for the gathering and the storage of resources. And he has a maximum of five. So potentially we can open up some of these spaces as the game progresses. This player here will choose Valkyr Thunderfoot, who also has five hearts and has two abilities. Dwani Luck, once on your turn, you may discard a loot card from your hand to change a die roll to a six. That's very helpful. Or Mother's Wisdom, you may have an additional quest card in your hand. Okay, because usually your maximum is just three quest cards at the end of your turn. But with Valkyr here, she'll be able to have four cards instead. Also, she starts with one sail, one cannon, and three slots available for cargo. Each player gets a ship pawn with their character standing and begins the game by choosing a starting location in one of the three kingdoms. And right here, this player has chosen this starting location, and the second player over here is starting way across on this side. Each player also begins the game with three coins, five of these black ammo dice, a world traveler die, and one of these map clue cards in their possession. 
And these map clue cards are basically additional ways of getting victory points, prosperity indicated by this symbol right here, or loot cards represented by this treasure symbol right here. For example, this one right here says, while at Staghorn Reef, which is one of the islands on the game, you can spend one action to complete this map clue and then draw a new map clue. And then you get to choose to get either a victory point or a loot card. And we're ready to begin, and we're going to start with this player right here. And on a player's turn, they have three action points to spend. And they have a few options as to how they can spend those action points. And they can repeat these options as many times as they please. First of all, you can use an action point to move one space in the direction of your choice. Second of all, you can use an action point to gather resources while you are on an island. And a third thing you can do with your action points is you can attack an enemy player who's on the same space as you. Also, quite often, as I showed earlier, many of these map clues require you to spend an action point in a particular location in order to fulfill them. So the first thing this player here is going to do is they're going to spend their first action point to move. And they can either move one space or if they so choose, they can exhaust their sails for this turn. It will, it will be refreshed at the beginning of the next turn. But they can exhaust their sail to move an additional space for every sail that they use. And with their first action here, this player is going to choose to move. And when you move, typically you only move one space unless you choose to exhaust and utilize some of your sails. And when you do, you turn them over, you flip the tile over. These are refreshed at the beginning of each player's turn. And you can choose to move as many spaces as sails that you exhausted. In this case, we are not going to use our sails and we're only going to move one space over here to Blossom Scary. And this is an island. And when a player ends their movement in an island, there's a few things that happen. First of all, if that island has not yet been explored, that means the question mark side of this little token is still face up, then that player gets to explore the island, discover what resource it produces, and in this case, it produces produces canvas here because they are the first person to explore this island they get a reward of one gold coin also every time you end your movement in an island whether or not you were the first person to explore it you draw one of these quest cards and this quest here is called Windshear's Jeweler. It says a renowned jewelry maker in Windshear Retreat has been asked to make a special incense satchel for a porkish shaman so she may try to enter the Lotus Dream. He needs you to bring the materials. So the objective here is we got to acquire some gems, some spice, and some canvas, and then we have to bring it to Windshear Retreat. And Windshear Retreat is one of the three strongholds on the outer frame of the board. So that would be right here, Wind Windshear's Retreat. And here's the outpost location. If I can make it there, I will get a reward, as long as I bring a, a gem, a spice, and a canvas, I will get a reward of five prosperity, five victory points, which is a lot in this game, one loot card, and five points. So this is a very valuable quest. And I'll keep it here in my player area. Again, you have a maximum of three incomplete quests that you can have in your hand at a time. Once you draw a fourth incomplete quest, then you will be forced to discard back down to three. So this player is done with their first action. We're going to do another action, a second action here. And since this player needs canvas as one of the three resources that they need to bring back to Windshear Retreat in order to complete this objective, we're going to use the second action to gather resources. And when you choose the gathering resources action, you can gather as many resources of that type as you want and as you can accommodate onto your ship dashboard. So in this case, I have three slots available. So I'm just gonna grab three canvas tiles here and we are off to a good start. So now this player is done with two of their actions. They're going to use their third action to move again. And this time they are going to use their sail so that instead of moving one space, they can move two. And they're going to move over here to this island right here, which is Ostrich Rock. And again, since they end their action, uh, their movement action here, they get to explore this. This is a gem. And since they are the first person to explore this island, they are rewarded with a coin. Also, since they ended their movement in an island, they get to draw another quest card. And here we have, the roof is on fire. It says, Boulder Points Forge 
caught on fire. Thankfully, most of the stronghold is carved out of solid rock, so the damage is minimal, but the forge will need to be rebuilt. So the objective is to bring metal and lumber to Boulder Point's stronghold, which is found right here. We could go to that outpost there. And if we deliver this successfully, we will get three prosperity, three victory points, one loot card, and two coins. And now this player is done with their turn, and we will proceed to this player over here. And for their first action, they're also going to move just one space because there's an island here, Trident's Trumpet. And since they end their action, their movement action, in this island, they will explore it, which it has spice here. And they get one coin for being the first player to explore that island. And since they end their movement there, they will draw the top card of the quest deck. And it says, a blessing in dark times. Even with the world in turmoil, love can still take root and blossom. There is to be a wedding in Boulder Point, And the pavilion for the ceremony is the last step. We need to deliver lumber and canvas to Boulder Point's stronghold right over here. And we will collect a reward of prosperity, three prosperity, one loot card, and two coins. Okay. So that was their first action. So for this quest, they do not need spice, which is the resource produced on the island they're currently on. So I will not use an action for that. However, I'm going to look at this map clue. It says, while at Trident's Trumpet, go figure, we happen to be at Trident's Trumpet, you can spend one action to complete this map clue and then draw a new map clue. You gain one prosperity, one loot. So this player is going to use their second action in order to complete this map clue. And they get to choose to get either one prosperity, which is a victory point, or one loot card. And I'm actually going to choose a loot card for this player because this player here, Valkyr Thunderfoot, has the Dwani ability, which lets them, once on their turn, discard a loot card in order to re-roll a die or change a die roll to a six. So this could be very, very helpful in occasion. So I want to have a good uh, supply of loot cards. You can only have... A maximum of three of your hand, but I want to have them available. And I drew this loot card, and here we have uh, this Boy Mine one-time use cards. And all of these red-bordered loot cards represent one-time abilities that you could only use one time and capitalize on its action. However, there are many cards that are also blue-bordered um, loot cards, which are actually uh, ship equip upgrades for your uh, dashboard that you could place on these two available slots in order to give your ship new and better abilities. But in this case here, it says I could use this card when a rival ship moves into my space and that rival ship will immediately take two hull. So this is something good to have. My opponent does not know that I have this. So if they mess with me, uh, they might be in trouble. So there's that. Now this player is done with their first two actions. They're going to take their third action. And for their third action, they're going to choose to move. And again, they're going to exhaust their sails so that instead of moving one space, they can move two and they're going to move over here and now they are in honeycomb isle and again they end their movement there we see that this is more spice honeycomb isle also produces spice which is not helpful to this player right now and again they are the first player to explore this island so they will be rewarded with a coin and they get to draw the top card of the quest deck because they ended their movement on an island and it says here legends of the deep Ancient legends tell of monstrous creatures that live in the depth of the sea. With your ship beset by storms, the crew begins to fear they are under attack by them. Maintain control of your crew. Objective. If you successfully traverse a treacherous sea, and the treacherous sea spaces are indicated here, not only by the darker waters, but also by the kraken tentacles that seem to be sticking out of the water. If you can successfully move through these spaces by rolling a 4, 5, or 6, then uh, you successfully accomplish this objective. So normally in this game, you're kind of avoiding the treacherous sea spaces. But here you have a quest card that will reward you for it. Now, the reward isn't too great. It's only one prosperity and two coins. But it's a little something to consider when you are forced to move through one of those spaces. And now this player is done with their turn. And we'll go back to this player right here. And they are on an island that produces gems. And gems is very important also for this additional uh, quest they're trying to accomplish here. They have Windshear's Jeweler. 
They need gems, spice, and canvas, and they already have the canvas. So I'm going to use the first action here to produce some uh, gems, since this island produces gems. And I will replace one of these canvas resources here, one of these slots, with my gems there. And we're done with the first action here. Now with their second action, they're going to choose to move. And they're going to move over to this trading post right here. We'll use a sail and we will move to the trading post. And the trading post is a very important location on the board. First of all, there are only three trading post locations in all of the map. And the trading post is one of the few locations in which you can actually repair your ship. So if your ship has taken damage, you can go to a trading post in order to repair it. A trading post also allows you to sell resources, loot, and map clues, and none of these cost you any actions. And one of the additional things that the trading post allows you to do, which makes it unique from the other locations on the board, is that it grants you the right to trade in resources. First of all, it allows you to trade two of any combination of the primary resources in this game, which are metal, lumber, and canvas, for any one within the same primary group. So for example, you can trade in a metal or a lumber for a canvas, or you can trade a canvas and a lumber for a metal. Or perhaps you could trade in two canvas for a lumber. As long as you trade in any combination of two of these, you can gain one of any of these. So that's a very useful way of gathering resources that are nowhere near you on the map. Also, while on a trading post, you can trade in one gems resource and three coins in order to draw the top card of the loot deck. Finally, while on a trading post, you could also turn in one spice resource plus three coins to draw the top card from the map clue deck. So I'm here in the trading post and I have no need to repair my ship. And quite frankly, I have no desire to sell any of my resources or any need to trade for anything. So instead, I'm going to use my third action to simply move over to one of these two next spaces here. And I'm thinking I'm going to try here, this island here, which is Orchid's Veil. Vale. And again, because I end my movement here, I'm the first player to explore this, which it has metal, which is metal the third resource that I need. No, I needed spice. So it has metal, and because I'm the first player to explore this, I'm rewarded with one coin. And because I ended my movement in a island, I have to draw the top card of the quest deck. And it says here, an overhaul for old Bessie. Your cannon has been through a lot. The barrel is cracked and the wood is old. It's time to show it some love and get an overhaul. Objective, I need to deliver lumber and metal to either Windshear Retreat or Boulder Point's Stronghold. So it gives me an option of two different outposts. And because of that, the reward is not as great. It only gives me two prosperity, two victory points, one loot, and two. Okay, so I am at my maximum here of quests. So next time I draw a quest card, I will be forced to discard. But this player is going to leave it there. They're not going to do anything more with their turn. They are done. And now we will proceed to this player right here. First of all, we will refresh their sails. So they're available again. And now let's look at their quest cards and see what they need. So they need lumber and canvas again. And that's nowhere on this side of the board as of yet. So what they're going to do for their first action is they're actually going to produce this spice. And they're going to choose to get three spice tokens here. And again, even though they do not need spice, they're going to choose to get this resource because it's still a valuable commodity that they can use for trade in the future. Now with their second turn, they're actually going to move and they're going to use their sail in order to move two spaces. They're going to go to the trading post over here. And now that they're on the trading post, they're going to choose to trade. And when you trade, you can trade any two of the basic type of resources for a basic resource of a different type. But none of the basic resources are in their possession. They have spice. And what they could do with spice is they can turn in one spice and three coins in order to draw the top card of the map clue deck. Which, by the way, earlier in the game, I forgot to draw an additional map clue when I completed this one here. So now we have two additional map clues. It says, while at Nautilus Shores, I could spend one action to complete this. And this says, while at Albatross Neck. So these are two locations that I'm going to keep my eyes out for. And by the way, one of the reasons why we keep the map clues face up in front of us in our player areas is because at any point of the game you can choose to return to your starting space which in the case of this player here would be right here you can choose to return to your starting space and if you do you will score 
one victory point for every completed map clue that you brought back to the space. However, if your ship ever sinks, which I referred to earlier, if that ever happens, you lose all your completed map clues, among other things. So you probably want to complete as many map clues as possible before you go all the way back to your starting spaces. That way you can get as many points out of it as you can. And now they are done with their trade. However, a trade is not an action, so they still have one action left. And for their third action, they're going to choose to move right next over to King's Helmet. And we have this uh, exploration token, which we reveal. So King's Helmet produces lumber. And lumber is one of the resources that they need for their objective, for their quest card. So that's really good news. And because they end their movement point here and they're the first person to explore this island, they will be rewarded with one coin. And whenever you end a movement action on an island, you will draw the top card of the quest deck. And here it says, Upgrading the Forge. With such a high demand for weapons and equipment, the worn out old bellows at the Boulder Point Forge just is not cutting it anymore. It's time to build a new one. So our objective is to deliver metal and canvas to Boulder Point's stronghold right over here. And we will gain three prosperity, three victory points, one loot, two coins. Okay, so we are done. This player is now done with their turn. And we will move on to this player right here. We will refresh their sails. And now for their first action here, they really want to complete this Windshears Jeweler objective. And it's great because there is spice on the other side of the world, so to speak, right here, right next to Windshear Retreat, which is where they need to go to anyways. So it serves their purposes. So what they're going to do is they're going to choose the quickest path in that direction. They're going to use their first action to move. And we're going to try to move through these stormy waters. And the stormy waters are not as easy to traverse as the calm waters, so it's not just a simple one movement point. I will need to use two movement points in order to move there. So I will exhaust my sails here, and I will move into these stormy waters. Now with my second action, I will yet again move, and I have no more sails available, so I can only move one space right here into Eagle's Landing. I'll reveal this exploration token here, some more gems. And because I'm the first player to explore this, I will be rewarded with one coin. I'm just going to make some change here, put four back. And again, because I ended my movement on an island, I draw the top card of the quest deck. And here we have the scent of academia. The sweet smell of incense hangs in the air of every great hall within the scroll-bound librarium. But the burners are getting old and tarnished, and the incense is running low. The objective is to deliver metal and spice to scroll-bound librarium, which is right over here. And I will be rewarded with three prosperity, one loot, and three coin. So I do have four quests here, and I have to discard one of them. I think I'm just going to get rid of an overhaul for old Bessie because it's the least valuable of all the quest cards. And I'll simply throw it into a discard pile. And now, finally, for my third action, I'm going to choose to move right over here. And for my third action, I'm actually going to choose to take a little risk, and I'm going to move into this treacherous sea space here. And every time you move into a treacherous sea space, you roll this World Traveler's Die. And on a roll of one, two, or three, you actually sustain damage to your ship, one damage. However, if you roll a four, five, or a six, then it allows you to move to an adjacent space. So this is a quick way or a risky way to try to take a shortcut. So I'm going to roll the World Traveler's Die right here. And I rolled a three, which means I failed to move through this space, and I will sustain one damage to my ship. I'll place this damage token here to cover up one of my hearts. And now this ship is one step closer to sinking. Now this player is done with their turn. We'll move over to this player over here. And they're here on King's Helmet, and that island produces lumber, which is one of the resources they need for one of their objectives. So they're going to use their first action here in order to produce lumber. So they're going to grab as many lumber as they want or can accommodate. They'll choose to get two lumber here. And now for their second action, they're probably going to want to work their way back over this way because there is metal in Orchid's Vale right here. They can try to risk it and explore some of these undiscovered lands to try to find metal, but why not go for the sure thing? While they're at it, they're going to use their, their second action to move two spaces. They're going to move here to Delia's Demise. I'm going to flip over this exploration token, and it's a lumber. They don't need any more lumber. But because they're the first player to 
explore this, they will gain one coin as a reward. Also, because they end a movement action on an island, they will draw the top card of the quest deck. And they have this card here, Rite of Passage. Traders have been attacking the shipping lanes, making it hard to get through. So the Merchant Guild is hiring private ships to make the deliveries. So they need to deliver a spice and canvas to either Boulder Point, Stronghold, or Scrollbound Librarium for two prosperity, one loot, and three coins. Okay, so this player again has a maximum of four quest cards in their hand because their character here, Valkyrie Thunderfoot, has the Mother's Wisdom ability. So they are not going to be forced to discard one of these cards. So now they're going to want to work their way back over here to the metal, and it's going to take a little bit to get there. So for their third action, they're just going to simply move to the next space over here. This is Bogey Cliffs. They will flip over this card, and it is metal. So look at that. That's awesome for them. On their next turn, they're going to be able to produce or gather some metal and hopefully accomplish their objectives. So, again, because they are the first person to discover this location or explore it, they get to get a coin for a reward. And they ended their movement on an island, so they will draw the top card from the quest deck. It says here, Higher Learning. With new students, truth seekers, and pilgrims arriving in the hallowed halls of the librarium every day, the small city is becoming overcrowded and needs to expand. I need to deliver canvas, lumber, and metal. Ooh, I might want to choose this instead. To the scrollbound librarium. And I would get four prosperity, one moot, one loot, uh, card and three so this might be an even better quest than the one I was trying to accomplish now I do have to discard a card because now they have five quests and they can only have a maximum of four because of their special power mother's wisdom And I'm gonna discard this one about the treacherous sea doesn't really interest me too much So we are done with that and this player is done with their turn now We will proceed to this player's turn here and they're gonna use their first action to move over here to honeycomb isle that produces spice and because they ended their turn on an island, they will draw the top card of the quest deck. And it says, you are here. An acolyte of Delvin magic has begun enchanting canvas maps to always show the location of the holder with small metal inlays and they need materials to make more. We need to deliver canvas and metal to sc scrollbound librarium. And this will earn us three prosperity, one loot, and two. So I'm looking at this. I have to discard because this player can only have uh, three at a time, incomplete. And I'm going to say that two of them are near scrollbound librarium so i might just keep them and i'll discard this one here uh the roof is on fire so i still only have three and now for their second action i'm going to gather some resources and i'm going to gather spice i'm simply going to grab one spice token here and replace one of these canvas here with the spice and now I have all three resources that I need in order to complete this objective. So the only thing left to do is to actually make it to the location, which in this case is the Wind Shear Retreat Outpost. So for my third action, I will simply move into that outpost space. And because I have, I have completed this objective. This quest here grants me five prosperity. I advance myself on the prosperity track or the victory point track in my kingdom by five spaces. It also grants me the top card from the loot deck, which in this case is Soothing Harp, which is a ship equipped card. The first treacherous sea you move on on your turn only fails on a roll of one. So this is very, very helpful. It's going to cost me two coins in order to equip ship with this which I will gladly do so. I will spend two coins and place it on this ship slot here on my ship dashboard. And now from now on, when I move into treasure sea space, only a roll of one will be a fail for me. Also, this quest grants me five coins. So that's a lot of money. Finally, I'm going to take this quest card and I'm going to put it face up in my player area. So this player is now done with their turn, and we will move on to the next player over here. So we'll start by refreshing their sails. And this player is here on Bogey's Cliff that produces metal, and they definitely want some metal. So they're going to use their first action here to produce or gather some metal. They'll grab one metal here and replace this spice with that. For their second action, they're going to choose to move over here to the trading post. And for their third action, they're going to move yet again but this time they're going to exhaust their sails in order to move up to two spaces. And they're going to move over here to Albatross's neck. Again, we flip over this exploration token and it produces canvas, which is one of the resources that they need 
for their objective that they're most interested in, this higher learning one. And because they're the first player to explore this island, they will re get a reward of one coin. They're also ending their movement in an island, which makes them draw the top card of the quest deck. It says, a burning edifice. In honor of the passing age, the Dwani Druids, which Valkyr here happens to be a, a Dwani, uh, Dwani Druids of the Librarium wish to burn an edifice of things past, a symbol of new birth and the cycle of nature. It says that we must deliver gems, spice, and lumber to Scrollbound Librarium for five prosperity, one loot, five coins. So there might be a, a change of plans here with this very valuable quest here but we do have to discard one which means i will discard right of passage right there and this player is done with their turn but it's really cool that they ended on albatross's neck because one of their map clues uh is in reference to that location and in the future they could use an action point when there to complete this map clue so this player here is done with their turn and, and now we move on to this player's turn who doesn't need to refresh their sales because they didn't use them last turn. We just finished depositing the three different resources that they turned in for their quest and they begin their turn here on Windshear's Retreat Outpost. And the outposts are very special locations not only because they're a reference point or a destination for many of the quests and objectives in the game, but it's also a very important place because it's one of the few spaces on the board that allow you to repair your ship along with the trading posts and your starting spaces. It allows you to sell resources and loot and map clues, but also it allows you to upgrade your ship. Now, unfortunately, most of the upgrades are going to require some type of resources. And right now, I don't have any resources in my possession. But I am going to take advantage of this time to repair my ship. And what you can do is you can spend three coins in order to heal one damage. So I will remove this damage token here. I'll spend five and get change of two. And now my ship is back to full health. And that did not cost an action, so this player still has three actions available to them. So they're going to use their first action to move. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move right over here to this treacherous sea space. And because I have this soothing harp ship equip, I get to roll the dice here and only a one will count as a fail. And I rolled a five, so I successfully moved past this treacherous sea space, and I can move to an adjacent space. So I will move right here. Now for my second action, again, I'm going to try to move through a treacherous sea space and take advantage of this ship equipability that I have. And this time, I rolled a one, so this is a fail. Again, my ship will take one damage. And I will not be rewarded by being able to move an additional space. So now I will spend my third and final action to move on to this space right here, Delia's Demise, that produces lumber. And because I end my turn on an island, I will draw the top card of the quest deck. And it says here, Field Testing Firepower. A group of Mountain Dwani Engineers have been developing new, more powerful munitions, and they need someone to help them by trying... The Try them out in a real battle. Hmm. Objective. Hit a rival ship with cannons. Successfully cause at least one hull damage by spending an action point to fire cannons at a rival ship that shares a space. So this is an incentive to provoke or initiate combat. So this player here is done with their turn. And now this player here will begin theirs. And this player here is only missing canvas in order to fulfill this higher learning quest. They have the lumber and they have the metal. And they happen to start their turn on Albatross's neck which happens to produce canvas. So for their first action here, they're going to get a canvas token and replace one of these lumbers here in their cargo slots. And now they have all three of those objectives. For their second action, since they're in Albatross's neck and their map clue or one of their map clues is related to that, they're going to spend one of their actions, which they just did, to complete this map clue and then draw a new map clue. Now I get to choose either one coin or one prosperity, one victory point, or the top card from the loot deck. And since this player here already has five prosperity, that's going to pressure this player to, to get one point and at least try their best to keep up. Now they have two map clues that they could potentially take back to their starting space and earn additional victory points for them. And now they will draw the top card of the map clue deck to make up for that one. And it says here, while at King's Helmet, spend one action. Okay, so they'll be looking out for King's Helmet. And then finally, with their third action, they're going to make it to the Scrollbound Librarium here. Or at least they're going to try. 
they're going to have to, I forgot to refresh their sails, sorry about that. They're going to try to move through these treacherous sea space right here. And they're going to roll their Traveler's Die. And they rolled a three, which is a fail. So they will, hold on, they're going to use one of their loot cards because they have the 20 luck. Once on your turn, you may discard a loot card from your hand to change a die roll to a six. So that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to discard that card, change their die roll to a six. Therefore, they successfully traverse these waters and can move to an adjacent space and in their turn on the scrollbound librarium outpost which is exactly where they need to be in order to accomplish this quest. So they're going to turn in their metal, their lumber, and their canvas. In order to complete this, this grants them four prosperity, so they will raise themselves four spaces on their prosperity track. It also grants them the top card of the loot deck, which we have here, Song of Luck. This, is, again, is a red-bordered one-time use card. It says, use at any time to re-roll any roll. Pretty helpful. And they're also going to get three coins. They will place this quest face up in their player area. And now this player is done with their turn. So for the purposes of this video, I wanted to show you guys what combat looks like in this game. So when two players share the same space, the active player can choose to use one of their action points in order to attack their enemy. First thing you do is you choose if you want to use any of your cannons. And again, for the purposes of this video, we've moved forward in the game. And this player here has three cannons. So they're going to choose to exhaust all three of their cannons. They'll flip them over to indicate this. And what this means is they get to roll one of their ammo dice for every cannon that they chose to use. So in this case, we're going to be rolling three ammo dice. Now we're going to roll the ammo dice here. And that is a really good roll. So the way that damage is inflicted is for every four pips, you're going to deal your enemy one damage. And here we have 13 pips divided by four is three and some change. So we're going to deal the opponent three damage. So, the so their ship sustains three damage. They have a life of five. So they only have two heart left. Now, if you have any action points left over, you can choose to repeat the action again, attacking your enemy. And if you are able to make their ship sink, then you are rewarded with half of their gold rounded up. And you also get a three point prosperity or victory point bonus. The player whose ship would sink would be forced to discard all of the resources in their cargo area. They would only be able to keep one ship equipped. They would have to return any completed map clues from their player area to the bottom of the map clue deck and they would have to respawn back at their starting location. So this would be quite the setback. And this is the way the game of quests and cannons plays. Players continue to carry out their actions, taking their turns, gaining as many prosperity or victory points as possible until a certain threshold is met, typically 15 or 20, depending on the player count and what players agree on. Once that threshold has been met, we will finish that round with all players taking an equal amount of turns and the player with the most prosperity is the winner. In case of a tie, the player with the most coins would win the game. Now let's get back and hear my final thoughts on the game. So what are my final thoughts on quests and cannons? First of all, let's start with the theme. The fantasy theme with the nautical setting is something that I very much can get behind and appreciate. There isn't much in this game as far as lore is concerned or backstory to the characters, but the narrative text on the different quests and the abilities of the different loot cards make this game feel very thematic and very immersive. Now, I, for one, am a huge huge fan of games that involve some kind of element of travel and travel is such a huge part of this game first of all manipulating the actions you take in order to move through the board as efficiently and effectively as possible it's so crucial to your success in this game also the particular locations they matter because you are trying to get to very specific places on that map and on that board and every single decision you make is very very important now I also am a big fan of games that involve some type of hidden objectives, hidden missions, or as the game here refers to it, quests. I love that idea. Games like Roombound, I enjoy them so much because I love the idea of going on quests. And this game here does it very well. I enjoy the 
way the quest cards are written from a thematic perspective. I, I enjoy reading the little narrative that's on each card, but I also enjoy seeing how the different resources that are needed for that quest kind of thematically correspond with what the little story is telling you on that card. And there's lots of variety as far as the quests are concerned because not all of the quests are about gathering resources and taking it to a particular location. Some of the quests involve you going to a trading post in order to make a trade. Others make you traverse specific sea spaces. Others kind of incentivize you to attack or, or start combat with one of the opponents around the table. So there's a good amount of variety as far as the quests are concerned. The underlying theme with all of these quests is that they incentivize you to go somewhere, to move, move to an island that produces a particular resource, move to an outpost in order to, to cash them in for victory points, move to a trading post, move to a space where an enemy is already located. This game also does a very good job with progression, with revving the game up because you start your ship very basic, you cannot move very far, your combat and your attacking will not be very efficient and you cannot accommodate lots of cargo but as the game progresses you're able to improve in all of these areas which will allow you to optimize travel it'll allow you to hold more cargo so you could complete perhaps more quests at the same time it also allow you to have more cannons so that when you engage in combat you're much deadlier and much more lethal in what you can do to your enemies now I do believe that the heart of this game mechanically speaking is the pickup and delivery mechanism a lot of what you're doing Doing is going to involve pickup and delivery and if you're not a big fan of that mechanism then perhaps you might not like this game either. Now I for one am a big fan of the pickup and delivery mechanism and again I feel that it's very well executed in this game. Now if I had to pick a weakness for this game it would be what I usually say about these type of games and it's that they're just not for everybody. This game has a fantasy theme and lots of people are not big into fantasy. Uh, it's a little bit of a longer game, although I won't say it's too heavy. I feel that once you play this game a couple rounds, uh, the rules are very intuitive and there's not too many uh, small little annoying rules like some of these longer games tend to have. So it plays out pretty smooth. I'd say that from a streamlined perspective, it's it's relatively fair for this type of game, this style of game, and this length of game. But again, it is longer and lots of people are not interested in playing longer board games. But I do appreciate that this game caters to different personality types. If you are a pacifist, a peacemaker, you can totally go the entire game without initiating a single combat and you can still very much be in contention for victory. Now, on the other hand, if you're more of a cutthroat, vicious, ruthless person with thirst for blood uh, and a vendetta with all the other players around the table, you can also be very satisfied in this game because you can attack your opponents and that will earn you victory points as well. But overall, I would say that this is a very good game. If you like fantasy-themed games, if you like games that have traveling and questing, if you like games that have pick-up and delivery and a little bit of combat sprinkled in, then this is a game you want to look into. Check in the description down below for more information about this game. Again, this game will be on Kickstarter later on in this year, and I will be promoting it on my Instagram channel and other platforms. This is Happy. Harry saying take care everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming.